Hi, I'm Dr. Sari Robinson from Oregon State University. My lab is the Applied Mycology Lab, um, and it's in the Department of Wood Science at Oregon State University. And it is hard to not let the spalting consume your identity. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. So, <laughs> so your book, Spalted Wood, which, you know, uh, I have to admit, it's like a New York City telephone book. It's, it's, it's like... Big. You could kill no, a burglar with it. Yeah, you could. Uh, and... You know, the amazing thing is, when I first looked at it, I opened it up and was thumbing through it, and there were all these pictures of really ancient woodwork with all this stuff, and it was like immediately eye-opening, uh, just amazingly, uh, you know, educational. It wasn't until, you know, two-thirds or more into the book possibly even three quarters, that it came to this section on spalted wood in the 20th century. And then this story about uh, Mel and, and my involvement. You were at a time and a place where people were moving back into handicrafts and were interested in bucking the trends of what was normally done. And it was just like this perfect time and you had the perfect material in it. Industry shifted down to, you know, sort of uh, this experimental level and so did uh, wood turning for, for that matter because Mel was a master machinist you know with General Electric and a, and a, uh, uh, a manager of quality control so he you know and yet he had this hobby of, of wood turning you know which he couldn't have done without all of the knowledge that he had from working as a machinist mm -hmm. at General Electric, you know, and, and playing with uh, the lathe and all that kind of stuff. A lot of things happened that way uh, with, with all of the craft media. There was a time that uh, it was really being back to the earth for a lot of people. They decided that they wanted mm -hmm. to get close to the earth again and get away from corporations and things like that. And then began making things with their hands, and yet they had uh, access to technology, which was an interesting thing. So the technology, uh, or science as you would call it, um, you know, gave entree into various aspects of working with materials that then became languages uh, for these um, craftspeople to speak through. Things happened in the way they happened. They, they they happened organically. They didn't happen scientifically. They just they just happened. Later on, um, you know, certain people, yourself being among many, uh, have uh, gotten into serious uh, university research and developed. Uh, what no one would ever even have thought possible. Spalted wood uh, and the pigments and the science of it could be in solar panels. To think that it could be, you know, a UV protectant for uh, paint, you know, for surfaces, decks, houses, house siding. I, I would still really like to see if there's something that could be done in the realm of uh, camera sensors. No one have even imagined that you would write a book entirely on spalted wood that included the depth of information that it does. I think it's great that the book is as big as it is. It's a coffee table mm -hmm. sized book. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's really something to try to wade through. You're not going to sit down and. It's not know, a one sitting kind no, of book. No, it's not. It isn't. Uh, you can, you can pick it up and go over it uh, again and again, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's it's really quite extraordinary. It's helping to change the dialogue too. I mean, that's that's amazing that that level of just like just because of the book, it's it's gone from the sort of base collective consciousness of spalting exists to, oh, there's these things. I think perhaps one of the most significant things that has happened with the book is that whereas 
since the 60s, spalted wood has been about black zone lines, calligraphic lines. You literally redefined it to include and encompass color in wood and uh, show throughout history that it has been there from the beginning equally as much, if not more. So, uh, you know, people think of spalted wood as being all about black zone lines, um, which is, that's great, that's what it is, but it's also now about wonderful pigments and wonderful colors, and, and not only that, you uh, are beginning to make those available to, to mm -hmm. people, and anyone can uh, I mean, I, I just can't believe that you've been able to duplicate, uh, you know, zone lines in an hour in, in the lab. In the uh, late 70s, when I was teaching at the Worcester Craft Center, teaching wood and design, uh, a couple that took an uh, evening adult education uh, chorus who were biologists and uh, chemists and had a lab uh, asked to have some spalted wood and see if they could, if they could duplicate it in the lab, and they were not able to. And you know, you did it, and and developed it, and now you're making it available to people. That's the amazing thing. So people can actually come to your website and find out answers to their questions and then actually buy the starter kit to make their own spalting. There was an article published in one of the trade magazines that, uh, you know, said that spalted wood was dangerous to your health. When I read your article that about the health aspects of working with spalted wood. Oh, an American wood turner, yeah. yeah. That... You you have proved that working with spalted wood is not inherently dangerous to to one's health, and not only that, you are doing testing through the university. Yeah, so we finally, um, you know, we could we could talk about this for hours, but right now we're actually we've we've set up our second round of zebrafish testing. We work with zebrafish embryos um, and exposing them to the pigments because there's there's no reason to test zone lines. They are, they are inert. We know they're inert. Melanin as well. Yeah, melanin. We are a science affiliation now, so we have the capacity to test them. So we are growing zebrafish in pools of spalted pigment. Um, and we've done one round already, but it's science, so we have to be sure. So in our first round, it was and the results were very clear that the pigment is bound to the glass because these pigments are not water soluble. And so nothing, nothing happens. The pigment may very well be toxic to zebrafish, but we will never know because it doesn't come off the glass in order for them to actually affect anything. And it's the same if you put it in textiles. Um, it, it doesn't move with your sweat. We've done tests on this with sweating and crocking and rubbing and bleaching and it doesn't come off, so it doesn't matter. Pigment is irrelevant. And the long and short of it is, I mean, for, for woodworkers is that uh, dust, sawdust mm -hmm. is the culprit really. You know, exposure to dust to your lungs without, you know, being properly protected, it can cause It can cause problem. cancer. Yeah. There's tons of studies on that. The EPA has a big old sheet on it, too. Well, there are all yeah. kinds of woods. Walnut is toxic, can mm -hmm. be toxic. Cedars. Redwood. Redwood, cedar. Those things will just take you out. There's a lot of, like, and, and the exotic woods, cocobolo, you can have, you know, allergic reactions, mm -hmm. too. The advice that you give and that I also give is to uh, use adequate ventilation, and that means like a blower system, you know, a vacuum system, where, you know, good dust... Uh, protection, either uh, a, a double uh, canister cartridge type system uh, or a powered air uh, respirator kind of system, which is what I use and I'm very careful about. If you're a serious woodworker right. and you're in there every day, six, eight hours, and you're not wearing a mask. Right, every, every time that you don't put the mask on is a time that you're building more exposure mm -hmm. to uh, toxicity uh, in your system. 
you know, and this goes uh, also for finishes as well. Just don't use finishes without adequate ventilation and masks. It's uh, this stuff is really important. I think that Zary would say uh, uh, above all, uh, spalted wood is not dangerous. Just use the precautions that you should be using mm -hmm. with all wood, and that's the, that's the main thing. It's a wonderful material, and and you know I I would say now because of what Sari has done, and it's Dr. Sarah Robinson who uh, is referred to by her friends as Sari. Um, look for color. Look for those colors. Those blues. Those reds. Those greens all of that color that's possible. I'm, I'm just really thrilled that you came to visit Sarah. I am so happy that you invited me, thank you. Yeah, yeah. and I, I wish you all the luck with your program at the university and uh, all great success. I hope that you, know, you crack the code of spalted wood down to its core and we will benefit from, from your research and your your school's uh, department's research and everything that you've been doing. It's, it's an amazing thing that you've opened up so many new doors with just, you know, spalted wood. We are currently in the process of doing whole genome sequencing on the fungi. So not just part, we're going to get their whole genome. And that will allow us to target the area of the genome responsible for pigment production, which will allow for industrialization of the pigment, which means that you might actually be able to purchase your solar cells at a reasonable price instead of it being, you know, just for the elite. Wow. Amazing developments. And to think that it's just spalted wood, mm -hmm. not just, just spalted wood anymore. Congratulations. Yeah, to you too for a wonderful lifetime of accomplishments that made all this possible. Because without you and your dad, there'd be no first rung of the stool to stand on. Oh, thank you. I... This has been amazing. <laughs> I am so glad. I hope you're as excited as I am. <laughs> Ciao.